instruction route this morning, and you're going to generate the background, and this will be like, we will rock you. So everybody from here over, you're going to be the stomp stomp. So you can either do it with your feet or lightly on the table, and everybody over here is going to be the clap on the offbeat, and I'll count it in. All right, all set. Here we go. One, two, three, four, stomp. That's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Other hand, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, this is almost identical with one little twist. Let's say we're doing 13 times, well, let's say 13 times 12. All right, so we've got 10, 11, 12, 13, and 10, 11, 12. All right, the hands come together and we say 100. Now, these are dimes, again, they're dimes. So we've got 50, right? 150. The thing is with this one, these are magic dimes. Turn your hands in. Now these magic dimes have become pennies. Multiply them together, two times three, and add them into the total. So the only difference is the dimes became pennies. Try it again. We got 13 times 12, 150. Turn them this way, they're pennies. Two times three is six. 156. Let's try 13 times 13. 10, 11, 12, 13. 10, 11, 12, 13. We know the answer, right? 169. Let's try it. 169. Other than that, it's very simple. You look animated and you react to what's going on. One other thing I must point out is, as in life, the male version of the puppet is very straightforward, simple, easy to operate. <laughs> The female version is much more complex, much more difficult to operate. It's only standing to reason. In fact, if you want to operate the female puppet, you have to be a bit of a closet gynecologist. 
However, if you can get past that, then you can do Muppet type puppetry. So I, I offer this only as a uh, an illustration. Do you believe this, Eve? We're here on the classic music trip, and we're about to hear the famous Italian opera singer, the tenor Enrico Pasta Rigatoni, live at the Skydo, the acoustical palace that it is. What a moment! A famous tenor, you say? Yes, Eve. The Italian opera company was going to trade him for two fivers, but in the end, they decided a tenor was better. <laughs> Stuff. You know, tricky on the tree. That's tricky on the tree, Anna, and I don't know what you find difficult about it. I can't tell a cosine from a coefficient, Eve, and I don't know a theta from a gamma ray. I'm in big trouble. Well, just for today, take your mind off math and enjoy the opera. Is that it? an oxymoron, Eve? Enjoy the opera? Just kidding, Eve. Which opera are we seeing anyway? It's called Sokatoa. Sokatoa? How do you spell that? S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. -H and what does it mean? I think it's Italian for I'm fine to see the light. Lucky, <laughs> here comes Enrico, Pastor Rigatoni, walking on the stage right now. This is going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have such trouble with trigonometry. The alphas, betas, betas were also weak to me. Dear sine, cosine, and tangent, I never got to know ya. Till someone stood right up abruptly shouting, smoke at Oa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine's adjacent over hypotenuse. Now I'm feeling quite complacent, cause I know that tangent is opposite over adjacent. I'm quite complacent <laughs> over adjacent. And now I know. I travel tricky roadways reading signs along the way. Do I know all the ratios of coast? And do I say, I'm off on this new tangent. Come here and let me show ya. And all because I heard that lovely word, the Sogatoa. <laughs> Sign is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine's adjacent over hypotenuse. Now I'm feeling quite complacent. Cause I know that tangent is opposite over adjacent. I'm quite complacent over adjacent. Now I know. So passing through the center. Now isn't that simple clap? Pi over squared sounds like area to me. And I need a circumference that is used by D with me. Pi over squared sounds like area to me. And I need a circumference that is used by one more time. Now, pi over squared sounds like area to me. And I need a circumference that is used by D. And my name and address is returned up in the top left hand corner. 
I simply reverse the two, put my name and address here, Kathy's name and address up there, put a little glue on there to seal it. It seals itself with the triangle. Put it in the mailbox so when Canada Post picks this up, they say, there is no stamp on this envelope. Let us therefore return it to Kathy. <laughs> them not to do it <laughs> because it is male fraud but in theory it's the perfect crime right? <laughs> and I it was amazing I got this little diamond and it's, it looks like a, a, a diamond ring engagement diamond and I'm going to take it down to the end here and have you pass it around from table to table so you can look at it and I thought, that, that is too beautiful. I need to go wait somebody up. <laughs> Every day he would walk by my room and I would say, hello, Sam. And he would sort of harumph as he went by because I was not number one on his list. <laughs> one day, he's walking by my room and he's got one of these in his hand. He said, whoa, 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 Sam, I didn't know you were into origami. He said, yeah. He said, well, I, I got to tell you, it really impresses women. <laughs> really impresses women. So I said, okay, Sam, if that works for you. So I said, would you show me how to make one of these? And he had to think about it, and I said to him, do you know how to make a geo bell? He didn't know. I said, I'll trade you. I'll trade you. I had him. So I showed him how to make a geo bell, and he showed me how to make one of these. And I added it to my repertoire. He said, Mr. Mitchell, look at you put there. Eight components. They're all simple. Each one is a parallelogram, and they lock together. He said, but the best part is this. He said, watch. You give it a little push here, a little push there, a little push there, and a little push there. And if you're under 30, you probably call that a ninja star. If you're over 30, you probably call it a pinwheel. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, away we went. And after that, he couldn't wait to get to me with another one. And I, so I, I didn't know how to do this. Well, in this day and age, if you don't know how to do something, where do you turn? Somebody said I asked my mother, but um, uh, what, what you might you likely do if you wanted to learn a procedure and you didn't know how to do it? Internet, yes. I went to Google and I typed in, remove the vest from under the sweater, and you know what the instructions are there? <laughs> it's amazing. I, I don't know who puts them there. <laughs> In a minute, I'm going to need a very light drum roll on your tabletop, and then I will supply the Benoit crash. Okay? It's all cute. So then it said, start with the sleeve of the vest, then on the sleeve of the sweater, reach up underneath from the inside, grab it and pull it around your hand. Okay, light drum roll there, please, the vest, and Benoit crash. So there it is, removing the vest. Uh, we'll the right, thanks. From underneath the sweater without taking off the sweater. Now, the interesting challenge would be put it back on, right? And I, I haven't mastered that one yet. That, that's pretty tough. Also, second footnote to this, many women have told me they have their own special grades. <laughs> If we think in terms of diameter, this is one diameter, two diameters, three diameters. It's three times D high, right? Because there are three tennis balls tightly packed in there. So the height is three times D. But pi r squared sounds like area to me. When I need a circumference, I'll just use pi D. The circumference is pi D, which is 3.14 times D. 3.14 times D is bigger than 3 times D. So the circumference, in fact, is larger than the height. And to check it out, you have a piece of string, which is cut to be one circumference. And you wrap it around, and you get an assistant to verify that that's coming tight. And he's nodding, <laughs> okay, all right? That, that comes tightly. So there's your circumference. And then you line it up with the side of the can. And notice that it extends over the top. So this little bit extending over the top is the 0.14, right? It's 3.14 deep. So the, the circumference is bigger than the height. 
And obviously, if I let go, that should fall off my finger, but it defies gravity, and it stays. It stays on my finger. So your first name is? Deb, I hereby grant you the power of anti-gravitation. Deb, may I have your hand, please? Okay, oh, yeah, so just a little higher, and then just turn, turn over. Okay, because I've passed this power along to you, you also now have the power of anti- Yes, well done, well done. <laughs> you're, you're such a natural. Okay, all right, and your first name? Pardon me? Andre. Andre, I hereby grant you the power of anti-gravitation. Andre? Okay, and you can, if you trace this, you can grant your students the power of anti now, you have to focus in on my mind here, and I'm focusing in on you on mass, right? And the amazing Mitchell is about to try and exert math mind control on you. Once again, laying on of hands is not necessary, but will improve the odds here. So, I'm trying to do that. And I would like you to put up your hand if you are thinking of elephants in Denmark. Elephants in Denmark? Look around the room, elephants in Denmark. Anybody thinking of eagles in Denmark? Emus in Denmark? Eagles in the Dominican Republic? Okay, okay, very Time's up. The answer is 105. Hands up if you got it right. Now, Let's try it with the mighty mental massage of Mozart's music. Pencils ready? 17 times 4 minus 19 plus 56. I'm just kidding right there. That's the same question. And I made a flap in a piece of paper. I said, Mr. Mitchell, we got you. There's no way you can fit through a hole in that piece of paper, it's too small. I said, Mariel, I'm not done. So I took that flap, that piece of paper, and we'll stand up here so you can see, and I cut about uh, nine or 10 fringes. So I'm cutting that flap, but not all the way down to the end. At this point, Mario and some of his buddies are standing on their chairs. <laughs> And if you've ever seen the movie Cool Hand Luke, there's a very famous scene involving a safety pin where the convicts are hoping the safety pin will pop. And you gotta see the movie to understand. Go rent Cool Hand Luke if you haven't seen it. When you get to the safety pin scene, you'll we'll know you're there. All right, so they're cheering for this thing to break. All right, so they're wildly cheering, saying, you know, if you can't fit through a hole in that paper, we are out of here. I said, I know. So then I took each fringe and I cut in on the other end. Well, I got about three fringes into this and the cheering subsided. <laughs> <laughs> and Mario said, Mr. Mitchell, I, I hate to admit this, but I think you got us. <laughs> I said, Mario, you know what? I think I got you too. Pass through the hole. Right around the microphone cord. Around my feet. Oops, very careful. So I said, now we're going to do some math. But I'll tell you what, I, I showed them how to do it. And I said, you can use this to your advantage. I said, go home this weekend. And if it's your turn to wash the dishes or do the vacuuming or whatever, <laughs> I said, you make a deal with mom or dad that if you cannot fit through the whole piece of paper, then you get out of that task maybe for a whole week. But if you can fit through a hole in that piece of paper, then when you then you know you're, you're out, of, out of the task for a week. So I said, report back on Monday. Monday afternoon they came back in. They told, yeah, I, I got out of cleaning my room, I didn't have to wash the dishes, I didn't have to come back in, you know, whatever. Mary at the back of the room, he's waving his hand. He said, Mr. Mitchell, I'm just doing cool. I made a bet with my dad and I won a case of beer. <laughs> I also challenged them. I said, you know what? I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing negative messages around the school. There are things written on the walls, you know, and, and most of it's 
not, not very nice, it's negative stuff. I would like to challenge you to put some positive stuff. If there's something that you think is neat, write it on the blackboard when you go out. I said, you don't have to do it just for me, but I said, you know, if people around the school started thinking more positively uh, and putting positive messages, we might have a better place. One that really got to me was the math textbook where somebody had written along the, the edge of the paper at the top, in case of fire, throw this one in first, right? <laughs> um, so I challenged them to read some positive messages around the school. And here's, here's what they came up with. Uh, one, one person wrote Carpe Diem, Seize the Day from Dead Poet Society. One person wrote Math Rules. You know, these were students who, who uh, really weren't great at math, but they, they had some fun and they got into it. One person said, smile, thanks for the interest in class. We're not doing it to hear kids say thank you, but you know, that was kind of nice to have somebody say thanks. Um, this one was not from a, a student, but from a, a teacher whose business card said, enjoy life. This is not a dress rehearsal. I thought, hey, what a neat thought. Enjoy life. This is not a dress rehearsal. Those 30,000 days that you've got, you know, you've got to do something with them. Obviously, you can't do everything with every minute of every day, but hopefully you're working on something that's productive and that you have some passion for. It. And uh, this one, I'm on fire. That actually comes from my son, who's doing a little videotape for me, uh, for me at the back of the room. And uh, he may not remember this, but he came out of a drum lesson when he was about 12 years old. I said, how did it go? He said, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. <laughs> it went so well to get that passion. And it made me cry. It still makes me cry when I think of it. How many people walking through the halls of that school are thinking, I'm on fire? And we need, we need both teachers and students with uh, some of that feeling. So what are the keys? Keeping your imagination active. Having a passion for the subject you teach, obviously you do, you wouldn't be here. And providing a bit of variety. One of my favorite movies is Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, but in the classroom, in the classroom, I think it's important to build in some variety so that it's not like that alarm clock and uh, I got you babe coming on every morning at 6 o'clock, right? Matthew. I can't believe I won this ticket for the maiden voyage of the Titanic in a poker game. There's a girl I'd like to meet. Who would try, Jack? She'll have nothing to do with the likes of you. Close your eyes, Rose. I'm flying. <laughs> take out a cap gun and come by and shoot. <laughs>
and I sing this for you now. This is sort of what my high school French distills down to. And uh, I picked the right politician when I wrote this about it. I wrote it about 23 years ago. Good morning to you, cornflakes. Bonjour, flacon de nez. I'll pour on the milk belay. Pass the sucre, see who play. I'll sit down, pull up on sheds, and read your words once more. I want to know them perfect font, so I'll do it all on core. Cause I'm cereal box bilingual. Feed my what the heck? I'd be fluent at breakfast talk with Gretchen and Lebec. On the other hand, John Crosby and I are Leon Blake. I'm cereal box bilingual, getting mayor every day, and that's better. Shaggy <laughs> sure. Keller A.T. it's lunchtime, and I'm eating shredded play. In English it says whole wheat, but in French il dit on tea. Has such a nice ring to it. So far I'll have Rice Krispies with berries sur la top. Écoutez moi, I want to hear the snap la crackle pop. Because I'm cereal box bilingual. Deep ma what the heck? I'd be fluent at breakfast talk with Gretchen and Levesque. On the other hand, John Crosby and I are Leon Blake. I'm cereal box calling, we'll get mayor every day. And that's better, Shag sure. Thank you, Kellogg's and Nabisco. Merci, Poe, stay to the rest. Now I won't be stopped at breakfast words when I try my civil service test. <laughs> They'll hire moi and send moi to la province de Quebec. Je me souviens, I will recall how to parlay and to sprec. <laughs> I'm cereal box bilingual. Deep my what the heck? I'd be fluent at breakfast talk with Gretchen and Lebec. On the other hand, John Crosby and I parlay on play. I'm cereal box bilingual, getting mayor every day. And that's better. Shock sure. The end. A fan. Say, what's the French word for Coco Puffs? <laughs>